All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Baha Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to all you true, sincere brethren out there pushing out this purified truth, cleansing this wicked, defiled kingdom, and that kingdom being Israel with the word. All right, because this word is that water that is purifying the elect of the nation of Israel. To the rest of the church, keep the faith because you may not be a teacher or you may not be out here prophesying, but your belief, okay, and you may push the gospel in other ways, all right, but keeping faith primarily, you can be saved in that belief, okay. And the water to you, I was shy because without him going to that cross, none of this would even be possible whatsoever, okay. So the Heavenly Father, once again, has allowed me to come out here and to prophesy the gospel and to look foolish in front of the eyes of this world, okay? Taking chances every time we come out here, whether it be jail time, someone come and harm us, but coming out here through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, to push the gospel to the nation of Israel. But more so, to get even deeper than that, the elect of the nation of Israel. So I'm gonna start off in the book of Jeremiah, chapter two. And this is verse 14. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? So here in this scripture, it's telling you, Israel was supposed to be the Lord's chosen people, right? But Jeremiah saw the condition that Israel was in, okay? Jeremiah saw how Israel was pretty much uh, brought down to a low level based off of them breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. So it was a question that Jeremiah asked. Is Israel a servant? Is Israel a homeborn slave? Seeing that, yeah, you're supposed to be a nation of kings and priests, but here you are under the captivity of, I think at that time it was, uh, was it King Nebuchadnezzar? I could be going off, all right, but the king of Babylon. And Jeremiah knew that our people should not have been living as they were living being wicked, going against the Heavenly Father, because with that came punishments. So Israel, being rebellious, compared to a lot of these other nations, we're like the uh, the laughing stock. We're, we're the, the lowest of all people, according to Esau. Jeremiah 2 and 14, is Israel a servant? So is the Negro, Latino, and Native Americans, are we servants? Seeing how we're living? Okay. Are we slaves? Seeing how we're living? Seeing how we're still under the heathen? That's what Jeremiah is asking. All right. But really he was, he was asking that in the sense of being sorrowful, being, being mournful. Because there was a time where Jeremiah, seeing the condition of Israel, he actually wanted to see our people saved, all of us at that time. Which in the end, in the kingdom, we're all going to be saved. But a lot of us on this side have to be brought to that deadly judgment by the Heavenly Father. Because it's not in them to get right. Seeing that you've been brought down to a low condition, and the answer is given to you on why that happened. And yet and still, you want to go against the Lord, keeping you as a slave, keeping you as a homeborn servant. When you were actually created to be a servant to the Heavenly Father and His Son, okay? And to be kings and priests over everything else in this universe. So that's disappointing to see that you're supposed to be the greatest nation we are, but our people are happy with breadcrumbs. 
that Esau leaves behind. Because you have no real identity. Being called an African American or a Mexican or a Puerto Rican, all these by words, that is not your nationality. Because when you're when you're considering yourself an African American all day and you're eating pork rinds and you think your heritage is eating uh, pork chops, you think your heritage is chitlins, that's bugged out, man. And that's more so Judah, you know, Judah being the head tribe, but Judah also catching the most hell being the head tribe. Judah's totally been ripped away from their identity to where as an heritage, we were given soul food. And soul food is nothing but food that destroys your soul, okay? Really the scraps that were fed to us during slavery was given unto us as a heritage by Esau. But the Lord gave us the greatest heritage on this earth, man. He gave us the law, statutes, and commandments. And he gave those uh, matter of fact, let me just pull that up right quick. This is the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 26 and... Uh, Matter of fact, let's start at 44. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. So the Lord, he's always been the type of power to destroy certain Israelites, the wicked of our people, but he always left behind a remnant because he made a covenant with our people. So we can't fully do away with us because he's not going to break his word, not even for his own name, okay? So Israel being given that covenant, with that covenant comes everlasting life. He can't cast all of Israel away, but the majority of Israel on this side will be casted away in the land of our enemies, wherever we may be scattered, okay? Let's read on. Verse 45. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am their Lord. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Okay, so that covenant was made with the children of Israel, not with all nations. So when Jeremiah was complaining, asking if Israel was a homeborn servant, that was really a question out of sadness, out of being uh, grievous at the sight of your people. Because when you look at things through the eyes of the Heavenly Father, all of a sudden, things aren't okay no more. When you're in the world, you can bear all this wickedness. It's nothing. Because when you're filthy, you don't have a problem being around dirt and filth. But when you clean yourself up, if you're in an all-white uniform and you clean, the last thing you want to be around is a bunch of filth. So now that, now that the Lord has purified us spiritually, we're seeing things through a pure mind. Okay? Although we're still in these same defiled bodies, which we've commit, we have committed a lot of transgressions inside of. But through the spirit, you know, we've become new men. So we're able to see our people as slaves. When you're inside of the matrix, you don't really feel like you're a slave. You feel like you're actually equal to your oppressor, which does not make sense. How could you be equal to someone who is oppressing you? That is stupidity. And it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But when you're a slave, your, your, your way of thinking is totally out of whack, okay? 
These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Okay? So let's jump to the book of Baruch because I read in Jeremiah 2 how Jeremiah asked if Israel was a slave. Well, that question is actually answered. This is the book of Baruch 3 and verse 'm gonna start at verse 6 Baruch 3 and 6 because this answers the question that Jeremiah asked although we were created to be the greatest nation of people on earth the Lord brought us down into a to a low level to where we've been pretty much we're at the base level of all nations when you look in a household you have the very top of the house being the attic then you have the basement the basement being the lowest level of the house so Israel has become the basement. Out of all the houses out there, Israel is like that, that base house that's been placed under all these heathens because of our transgressions against the Heavenly Father. Okay? This is Baruch 3 and 5. Remember not the iniquities of our forefathers, but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. For thou art the Lord our God, and thee, our Lord, will we praise. And for this cause thou hast put thy fear in our hearts, to the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. So it says we should call upon his name in our captivity. So before I read further, that already shows you that we are still presently in this captivity. Why do we know that? How do we know that? We know that through the scriptures. Yahweh Shai has not been sent back to deliver the nation of Israel. Because the scriptures tell you how the nation of Israel is pretty much going to be a prey by the rest of these nations. More so the wicked being Esau, the so-called white race, until Yahweh Shai comes and delivers them. Okay, so there's no way that you could be a child of God but then claim that you're free. The only way that you're free is mentally through this truth. Because when you look at John 8 and 32, 